I feel a turbo boost coming on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> This is what it was like in 87. Hi, I'm Dennis Gage, and welcome to my classic car. Well, this week we're in Salina, Kansas to visit my good friend Roger Morrison. Live with Dennis. <laughs> that ought to be a hoot. <laughs> now, Roger's collection spans everything from a 1912 Rolls Royce Silver Ghost to a 2016 Mustang GT350. But today, we're going to look at a couple 80s performance cars. Now, I know 80s performance is a bit of an oxymoron, sort of like jumbo shrimp, but there were a few bright spots. One was a Celine Mustang Fox body car, and the other was a Dodge Omni that had been breathed on by Carroll Shelby. These things are amazing. No, really, they are. Roger, so good to see you again, my friend. Welcome back to Salina. <laughs> Great to be here. Thank you, know, you. You've always got such interesting cars, and we were chatting a few months ago, and you said, you know, I, I, got, I got a couple of 80s performance cars. Who'd have thought? Yeah, 80s. that's why I said, really? <laughs> no, no, really. And, uh, we, you know, we got, we got chatting, and, and you convinced me. I mean, you, you, you do, and you brought them out today. You, yeah. These are really a couple of interesting cars. You think of uh, the 80s as not a particularly good time for style or performance. But there were some bright spots. The, the Celine Mustang, the Fox Body Mustang, I, I credit with bringing young people back into the car hobby because it had really fallen off for a lot of reasons. Right. But here you came out with a car, it was affordable, you could beef it up with bolt on parts and have a blast with it. And then Steve Celine, you know, made these fire breathing monsters. He did what Shelby did, left the engine the same, but then modified the suspension so you've got the road holding. These are special wheels that American made for them. Uh -huh. Five lug instead of the four lug. Right. And they're 15 inch and they're seven in the front and eight in the rear. So that's a, I mean, that's a big wheel. For that for the, time, for that it time, was it a really wide is. tire. There was body mods like, like up here. Yeah, that balance panel has the ducts for uh, brake cooling and uh -huh. it does have the four wheel disc brakes. This one, I see a, a 105 there. Did he designate all the cars? Yes, I'm not sure how that started, but that's a typical Celine touch. It's an interesting color too. I mean, I've never seen this on, on one of these Celines. Well, it's a cobalt blue. The traditional colors were red, white, and black. And then Celine, again, very 80s. Uh, yes. <laughs> Got the graphics everywhere. And then the ground effects, that was all part of the Celine touch too? Yes, it was. We thought the idea was to have less turbulence under the car and then mm -hmm. a space for the graphics. Interesting interior too. This is obviously something special. The seats especially are. So you can see they've got wide bolsters uh -huh. and a surprisingly good lumbar support. It has a very comfortable driving position. And it the says package. Celine just about everywhere. Yeah, you can't get away from that. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing, nothing says 80s like a graphic equalizer no, on your stereo, right? Kenwood, 60 watts, AM, FM, cassette, and with a graphic equalizer. Oh my goodness. Pretty wild once you get to the back though. Sure, you got the valance in front and all that, but you really can't miss this, can you? No, um, <laughs> this was uh, part of the really concentration on the aerodynamics of the time. The valance on the rear is also part of the design. Like you said, it's got the 5.0 Mustang engine. Let's go look at that. Sure. I recognize that engine. Well, it's brought a lot of burned rubber to a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's a real reliable and very powerful and power plant. Fairly lightweight. Did you want one of these for a long time or did you just find one that... I've just uh, gotten interested in these 80s cars. I think mm -hmm. they've been overlooked. Mm -hmm. I think they're a screaming value yeah, I, right I would now agree with that, yeah. for the innovation and for what they were at the time. You told me we could even take this and drive it, and that you actually set up an autocross course. Is that true? Well, there is an active autocross club here on our old former airport runway, and uh, why not? Well, Let's why? go. Well, you've never seen me do that. Now, you uh -huh. know, I'm not the world's best autocross. In fact, they call me Cone Slayer. Okay. But if you're, if you're willing to do this, by golly, okay. I am too. Well, it's got a seat belt, so okay. we'll go. <laughs> Close it up. Let's, let's right. do some autocrossing. <laughs> All right, so uh, what do you think? Can we do this thing? Sure. There we go, all right. <laughs> <laughs> nice rumble. I, well, it's, you know, the 5 is a great engine. You're a brave man, Roger. <laughs> you're, you're brave or foolish, I'm not sure, I'm not sure actually which. I'll let you know later. <laughs> all right, we're gonna go through this first, you know, so I'm gonna get the feel for the Celine. What 
testing here is the race mark suspension. You can tell right away just she's very stiffly sprung. That's the technology of the 80s in order to have not so much roll. See, we're going fairly flat through here. Right. Um, but it was stiffness. It's such an amazing difference, but that's part of the fun of going back and seeing what the state of the art was at the time. Okay, now that was the first time. Let's see what this does. All right. I'll tighten my seatbelt <laughs> just a little bit more. Holy cow! What a blast! All right. test these four-wheel disc brakes, because that's one of the modifications they made. So are you smooth here, or are you kind of rocking and rolling here? Well, you that's know, the question. It's, a, it's, a, it's an experience, let yeah. me tell you. <laughs> You're going to miss it. Oh, oh, we took out a few there. There we go. All right. <laughs> we'll go around again. Yeah, okay. try, to, try to hit a no, few right. this time. It's so much fun with a rear-wheel drive platform. You're gonna make it, hang on, you're gonna make it, you're gonna make it. <laughs> These are street pressure tires. Now we haven't really pumped them up, just as if somebody rolled up to the autocross course and they said, hey, that looks like fun. I just drove my, I'll just drive up here and see how it goes. And there's how it goes. He's got the tail hanging out and he didn't hit a cone. Amazing. Oh, well, wonders never cease. <laughs> I'm shocked. That was your nemesis, and you didn't, you didn't hit it. Wow. Is it OK for me to breathe now? <laughs> Please? Cross yourself. <laughs> Well, that was fun. <laughs> well, it was fun for me. I don't know about you. <laughs> uh, the jury's still out. <laughs> <laughs> that is a smoking car. Well, I'm glad you thought so. I had fun riding. Well, a totally different approach to uh, the whole thing is front wheel drive. And this is probably one of the weirdest cars. This is actually a Shelby Dodge. Yes. A real Carroll Shelby Dodge, right? Yes. Okay, what's the story on that? Well, what I read that Shelby took some time off and he was in Africa. And he got a contact from Lee Iacocca. Chrysler was having some issues, and he said, I need help. You can't turn so they Lee came back, down. Right. They wanted something that's sort of a halo car, a performance car. They started with the GLH, Goes Like Hell. And that's what GLH really yes, stood for, Goes right. Like Hell. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and that was uh, two years before. And then the next year, they had a turbo, GLHT. Then the GLHS, which Shelby said, some more. Oh, so it goes, goes some like more. hell, some more. <laughs> Although some people say it's, it's the Shelby connection. And then they had 12 pounds boost and 175 horsepower. And horsepower. 12 pounds of boost is a lot of boost. Yeah, I think you'll feel that when we get out to the track. <laughs> a little bit of turbo lag and a little bit of torque steer. But then boom, huh? <laughs> so what all did they do suspension-wise? Did they Yes, change it? they had Coney shocks on all four wheels, adjustable. Shelby Centurion wheels, they were a special cast wheel. This was... Carroll Shelby's personal car for a while. Is That's that correct? correct, yes. And it, um, I bought it at the uh, auction in Monterey, and it, the title says Carroll Hall Shelby Trust, yes. How many out. people get to own a car that Carroll Shelby owned? Yes. I mean, it's, it is, you know, and it's weird. Roger, this is weird, but it's really pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> Interior-wise, is this just an Omni? Yeah, it's stock, and what is exciting to me about it is these interiors are so fragile, so it's just remarkable that it's uh, survived the way it has. What a beautiful steering wheel. Well, that's part of the package, just leather-wrapped, and then you've actually got a Momo shift knob. Something I think is crazy is the uh, air conditioning and heating controls are on the left of the steering column. That's odd. So really no particular mods back here other than the graphics, Shelby Turbo, intercooled. 
Now, I seem to recall this thing was pitted against a GT350. That's right. It was a feature, in fact, on the cover of Hot Rod Magazine. Rick Titus, an accomplished driver, drove a real GT350 65 and one of these at Willow Springs and they did the lap times and the GLHS was a few tenths quicker around the track. Faster than a yeah. GT350 yeah. Mustang. That's crazy. <laughs> so let's go look at that turbocharged intercooled monster up there. There we go. All right. Hood prop. Hood prop over there. Okay. Right now there, now there okay. we're ready. So that's so that's what we're, we're looking at here. This is what 2.2 liter? Yes it is and it's overhead cam. Pretty fun little car the way it's all packed. These are the tunable shocks? It's surprising yes. They're the uh, Coney adjustable shocks and here. That's the adjuster? Yeah, yeah that's right. And rotate to firm. There's actually four different settings and it's surprising when you crank that around to the firm side, the fourth setting, it uh, makes a big difference. And this is just, this, it, that's all it is, huh? Just Genuine tweet, tweet. plastic. Genuine yeah. plastic. Yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. The Celine was just insane and totally fun on the autocross track and, and you, you're still standing. Yes, yes. <laughs> so what do you say we try this front wheel drive? Uh, I think it'd be fun. I think it'd be a, a good contrast cars just built virtually the same time, yeah. totally different uh, engineering package, totally different styling package, and uh, the same driver, so we'll see how he does. All right, let's see. All right, All right. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> you ready to do this again? Uh, do I have a choice? <laughs> <laughs> no, not anymore. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I got my belts on. Oh boy. This is going to be real different. Yeah, than the, well, uh, that's the scene. idea. The front drive versus the rear drive. Crazy right. drive. The, the only consistent thing is the driver. He's, and he's consistently bad. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Hard to believe this thing's got the guts it's got. Well, this is a pretty healthy motor. Right off the bat, she's a way different feel. Well, I think Shelby would be happy about that. What he said, he took a plug ugly box with a terrible cable shifter and tried to make something good out of it. No, well, I think he did. He did. Yeah. This whole thing can't weigh much. Oh, I, I should have weighed it, but I think it's about 2,200 pounds. <laughs> And we're up to 175 horse. That's, the, uh, that's for, a lot of horses out of this. Well, box. especially since the first Dodge Omni and Plymouth Horizon had 75 horse. <laughs> that is a good uh, increase, isn't it? And then it's got the Shelby ECU on it and a sort of tuned uh, intake system. So it, you can feel it. It's a healthy motor and it's got a pretty nice torque curve thanks to the turbo. Well, I'll tell you the other thing, and I love that Celine, but but this through the slalom is way tighter. You said you feel like it sort of pulls you around. It does. It's not pushing you for sure. It's no. just bringing you right around. I love hanging the back out on a rear-wheel drive car, but this just really clings. Well, I'm glad you're having fun. So am I. <laughs> you are a brave man, Roger. I, I'm astounded that this one was Carol's personal car. Well, he didn't, he didn't have it from new, but he had it for quite a long time, and he, not knowing the exact details, but at some point he must have wakened up and said, hey, I don't have one of those. <laughs> I built it. I should have one. Yeah, this is number 86 out of 500. So uh, there's a Shelby uh, Dodge Club that's very active. And what we're doing here is calm what, compared to what they do. Oh, I bet. Uh, they have drag racing and uh, some pretty competitive events at their national convention. Very active club, Shelby Dodge Club. You really like unique cars. You mean all your collection is, is very unique stuff. This is probably one of the most unique in, well, a, in an odd way. <laughs> I 
I love the slalom in this car. This and is it a does blast. Show it's just a blast. <laughs> a lot of cars of the 60s, 70s, 80s, with some simple tweaks, it's amazing what uh, you could get out of them. And particularly the 80s, because everything was so detuned. Yes. Then. It was a dark time, but this yeah. was sort of a ray of sunshine. Thanks for turbos. <laughs> <laughs> so until our next meeting, remember, honor the timeless classic. I'm Dennis Gage. Happy motoring. Hi.